Six out of 10 kids witness bullying at least once a day. Nine out of 10 LGBT students experience harassment at school and online. Approximately one in three adolescent girls in the US is a victim of physical, emotional, or verbal abuse. What happens when a community works together to give kids the tools to intervene when they witness violence and bullying? Get parents talking about bullying and dating violence. Foster positive school climates where all staff members are equipped to effectively handle bullying situations. And implement long-term systemic change toward preventing bullying. The, the top-down model, the authoritative figure thing, um, in my time as administrator, it doesn't work. The kids aren't running the building, but a kid, the kids do have a huge piece in how this building is run, absolutely. There are issues. We have 1,400 kids in this building at given times of every day. We have every issue that a small town would have. The number one thing going into a school was to create a culture where students felt respected and they felt listened to. We let kids be kids, but, but we also put the ownership back on them. A situation that in the past would have blown up into a fight or an argument and brought to the office, now is diffused before it ever gets to that point. Now it's diffused by students, by their peers. Our students said, we're gonna own this building. We are gonna own how this community feels about us, what goes on in our hallways, and we're gonna make a difference starting today. We are all family, we are all Wolverines. In 2006, the Waite Institute for Violence Prevention, in partnership with Futures Without Violence, Mentors in Violence Prevention, Second Step, and the Workplace Bullying Institute, launched a five-year, multi-partner, multi-system violence and bullying prevention initiative. It takes courage to stand up. It takes courage to do the right thing. And the important thing is when somebody stands up and does the right thing, you have to stand there with them. You have to stand side by side with them, not behind them, side by side and show them we're in this thing together. People are way more apt to step in and um, help out kids that are fighting or whatever's going on and just say, hey, you know, I'm here if you want to talk. Let's let's get this worked out right now. I want her side of the story first, so let's, let's hear what's going on. In my opinion, our class is pretty mature as freshmen, but I think that us being able to step in and be those mentors kind of helps the other students grow up a little bit too. Going through mentoring, I think that really kind of helped people see what it can be like with out the bullying and without the rumors and what you what your options are. Do you know you can be better than what's going down? Then do it! Dang, this is where you start over. Over five years, attitudes changed. More kids felt behaviors like gossip, spreading rumors, and name calling are bullying. Kids who were talked to by adults about bullying and violence, whether at home or at school, were more likely to intervene when they witnessed bullying. More students felt putting down LGBT students for their sexual orientation was unacceptable. The number of students written up for one incident of bullying behaviors was reduced by 40% in three years. The percent of students written up for repeated bullying behaviors in grades 9 through 12 was reduced by 60% in three years. Freshmen get to go to the dance um, starting at like 7. Some of the kids were standing off to the side. And then Tucker saw this girl and she was kind of frustrated because nobody wanted to dance with her. Charlie brought her over and they just started dancing with her. We accepted her and she felt so good. And it made me feel good because I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Like, we did something really cool here. It's all about leadership. It totally is. It's because we grew up with yeah. really awesome leadership. When you do get to know that kid and when you do see them smile and you can have fun together, which you probably wouldn't normally get to do that in the classroom, but on the dance floor, heck yeah, you can. <laughs> and that, like, it, it's contagious for me. It makes me feel awesome. Awesome. Like, it's the epitome of what our culture at West Point High is like. When you walk through the hallways, it's the same kind of thing. Like at West High, if you try to be a part of something, then you're going to be accepted as part of that, that group. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. It doesn't have to be a sport. It doesn't have to be a student council. There's a million things to do there. By the end of the night, these freshmen have grown out of their shell. They were like little caterpillars, but now they're butterflies and they're dancing around. And it's just like in one night, our whole school bonds together. How can you be a part of a community in motion? Foster partnerships between community organizations, schools, parents, and students working to reduce bullying and violence. Encourage violence and bullying prevention program implementation at all grade levels. Start a community-wide anti-violence and bullying task force, including students, parents, educators, administrators, and community activists. Keep it going. Participate in the Bully Project's social action campaign.